the top. What is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, everybody, into the Overreaction of Buffalo Sports Show, brought to you exclusively on the Overreaction Sports Network. I am Joe Miller, and you can find me on Twitter at Joe Miller Wire to talk about. But before we even get to that, please do me a favor. Please like, please subscribe, whatever platform you are consuming this podcast on. Uh, please do me a favor. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, tell a friend, right? Retweet this thing. Share it on Facebook. Uh, let people know that we're out here, that we're doing our thing. It's good to have everybody that is joining us right now in the comments section. Richard Rush uh, is with us. Karen Idzik is with, with us. And now Jerry Ostrowski is with us. <laughs> Jerry, I, I had all kinds of trouble. I had, I had audio issues. <laughs> like I Jerry, co-host issues. <laughs> I have reading English time issues. <laughs> <laughs> anyways hang on a second uh but we got a whole bunch of people joining us it's good to have so many of you i'm glad that you guys can all hear me now specifically uh i got jay spence the king joining me in spirit he's on jay my shirt spence. which is good uh but uh as we always like to say here on the overreaction show whether this podcast finds you around a cup of coffee at the gym with your airpods in on the drive to work or watching me live right now let me and jerry just say one more time welcome and with welcome. that jerry how are you, buddy? I am doing well. I'm uh, okay. T tomorrow is tax day. <laughs> yes, it is. Mine are done. So, mine, mine got done. Well, mine, are done <laughs> mine are done too. But you know, we're in the process of trying to get everything signed and trying to get this electronically done here. And and so, I lost track of time, Joe. I apologize. Plus, it's Masters Week, my man. And and, 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 you, and you sent me the voicemail. Like I called you like at like eight oh two, and I was like, "You you have been sent a voicemail." And it's like, uh, "All right." I don't even think I sent you a voicemail. <laughs> I just totally, absolutely ignored you. No worries, no worries. It's sorry, all, it, my, I I apologize to you. I apologize to everybody else too because your time is um your time is valuable. Well, it's it's good to have you alongside me. It's uh we're gonna miss uh, John tonight, but uh, John is uh, off doing something. Johnish, I don't know, but uh, it's uh, it, it's good to have you with me, Jerry. So, Jerry, this is what's going on. We're going to talk about some things uh, on this show this evening. Uh, first of all, OTAs. We're going to hit that real quick, and then we're going to talk. the The schedule is to talk about basically who's on top right now, right? When you look at these rosters in the AFC East, like the Buffalo Bills, four time AFC East champs, yada yada yada. We all know the script, but there's a lot that they have lost. They've got some excuse me, holes to fill. And the other teams have, other than the Patriots, have done quite a bit as well. So we're going to talk about that. Um, however, we're not going to get super deep into it because we want to do a full team breakdown per AFC East team in the coming weeks, exactly. probably in that June time frame when like nothing is going on. So when it's like dead season time and there's really nothing to talk about, we're going to bring on more than likely a beat reporter from each team, the Dolphins, the Jets, and the Patriots, and we're going to break down their roster, talk about what they think, and kind of get a, a, a candid idea of how they feel about their team and what their team is going to do. But before we do that, things are very different in the NFL now, Jerry, than when you played. I think you know that. <laughs> yes. uh, um, they get paid a lot more money than I do. <laughs> And they work a lot less yes, than, they do. Than, than, when, than when you did. So it was funny because I was at church today um, and uh, all of a sudden players started showing up at church today. And I was like, what is happening? And they're like, oh, it, OTA start tomorrow. And I was like, wait, what do you mean OTA start tomorrow? I was like, I'm like, what kind of a content creator am I that I don't even know that OTA start tomorrow? But we have been so engrossed in this Stefan Diggs drama. That like I, I feel like the mafia, the content creators, everybody's just kind of like and and it's not like there's like great organized team activities. Like they're not gonna be out there and like running plays and stuff like that. But still, like the fact that like the players are arriving voluntarily at one bill's drive to to start this stuff is like I was surprised. I was like, oh, oh how long are you gonna be in town for? And they were like, until June. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> Joe, we're like 145 days away from the season starting. Do you realize that? Did you do the math? Did you do the yeah, math? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually actually I saw it the other day. Um, but we're literally like 145 days away, 140 days away. I mean, it's here. So OTA starting on Monday, while it seems early, 
Uh, it's not. They'll get the veteran OTA out of the way. They'll have the draft. They'll bring the draft picks in, have the rookie camp, yep. which I think is kind of a waste of time. But, um, you know, some teams still do it. Obviously, the Bills still do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, kind of get their feet wet, understand what's going on, learn the just the outer crust of the offensive and defensive playbooks because there's just not enough time to get fully entrenched in that just, you know, theory and, and what, what the team wants to do. And they'll start evaluating from that point on. I mean, um, that's the thing. Tomorrow, evaluation start. Every day you're on the field, every day you're in the building, you are evaluated, and those evaluations begin tomorrow. Yeah, so I've got the breakdown for you, and this is better than Camp Marv. And uh, I've heard that uh, Camp Marv was a, a, a legendary back in the day. So, uh, so workouts cannot begin prior to the first Monday in April for clubs with a new head coach or the third Monday in April for all other clubs. Uh, workouts are strictly voluntary. Club officials cannot indicate workouts uh, or anything other than voluntary or are anything other than voluntary. Yeah. Maximum, it gets better, maximum four workouts per week, no weekends with one week being the mandatory mini, mini camp not permitted on the weekends. Contact work is prohibited prohibited in all workouts. Uh, for example, live blocking, tackling, pass rushing, bump and run, etc. Intensity and tempo of drills should uh, be at a, a, at a level conducive to learning with players' safety as the highest priority. Now, here's the thing. The Bills are in the first two weeks of OTAs, which is called phase one. Do you want that information? Do you want what phase one is? I, I don't really need it. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna it give, it's I'm gonna actually, give it, it's I'm gonna actually give, pretty disgusting. But I'm going to give it to the listeners just because there's a line in here that's awesome. So Yes, please do. Phase one, two weeks, right, starting tomorrow or today, if you're listening to this in podcast form on Monday. Limited to strength and conditioning activities, quote, unquote, dead ball. Only strength and conditioning coaches are allowed on the field. They cannot interact with the coaching staff at all on the field. 90 minutes maximum on the field clubs can only specify two hours for players to be at the facility, which basically says I can only tell you to be here between one and three. I can't tell you that you got to be here between one and four or 12 and three. It's only two hours and the players get to choose the other two hours for weights and for their workouts. So effectively the team could say eight to 10 and then the player could come back at midnight and work out. This is the fun part. Uh, they can go through dead ball explanations. Uh, QBs can throw, or, or I should say, this is the dead ball explanation as far as what can happen on the field when they're out there for 90 minutes. QBs can throw to receivers with no coverage. Kickers and punters can kick, but players cannot field the ball, and no snappers or holders can be involved. <laughs> Long snappers can only snap into a net. Yes. What is that? Or to each other. And that's not even that's not even the the, the big one. I don't even like this is the last line of phase one defensive players may not catch balls at all, regardless of who is throwing them. So they can't even go out on the field and be like, Jerry, yes. go long. Yes. <laughs> like, like me as a corner yes. or me as a, I don't know, tight end. I can't tell you Jerry is a corner to go long. Hey, run well, basically, ball. basically what you're looking at Joe is this. Okay. This is a way for the team's, to get players back in the building, to look at them, physically see them and say, okay, you're working out, you're not working out. They get to kind of do a pre-evaluation or an assessment of where these guys are. Injured guys coming in that haven't been around, they can assess how the healing process is going, seeing how off-season surgeries are clearing up, all that kind of thing. You know, I would have to think there's probably some fudging of this. Usually the players are fine until there's some sort of contact involved. If they if they mistakenly run into one another, then <laughs> phone calls are made to the league, okay? Well, actually, phone calls are made to the NFLPA, which then makes the phone call to the league because we right. know that right. numerous times teams get turned in by players for not following the rules. But really the whole part of this is to get guys in the building, to see them work out, just physically look at them and see how they are at this point in the offseason. Right. So it's just it's just funny that they're it, like it's down to the letter of the law of defensive players cannot play catch. Like well, what's new? I mean, they can't play catch anyway. That's why they play defense. <laughs> that's not completely true. I mean, we're, we're literally we're literally solidifying stereotypes, right? Matt I mean Milano can catch a football. Matt Milano can basically catch. this is basically verifying what we all believe. 
if, if, if I, I mean, if I'm going to take a stump and argue, maybe if they were allowed to catch in phase one of OTAs, they would intercept more footballs. If you really want to go one step further, have a spelling bee uh, with the defense and the offense and see who wins. I would, I would venture to guess the offense would win. Listen, I've been doing a show with John Fina for years, <laughs> and I'm very much aware that John Fina, much like you apparently, feels like that the smartest players on the football field are the offensive linemen. Well, like I said the other day, Joe, there's been five or six presidents of the United States, and all of them played offensive line. Is college. that true? Is that that true? is true. Yes, that is very true. Now, I have an anomaly. I have an outlier in my house. I have okay. a I have a defensive end that's my son that's yeah. a 375 in finance. And a wide he will graduate in three and a half years. He was a misplaced offensive player that is playing is playing defense. Uh gotcha, he gotcha. probably if if we had fullbacks in in uh in abundance in, in today's football, that might be where he played. So he would gotcha. be an offensive player. Gotcha interestingly enough so let's pivot so everybody that's that, that's tuned in and if you're tuning in late on youtube or uh, on twitter or facebook you are tuned into the overreaction uh, buffalo sports show we are going to jump over real quick and we're going to briefly hit this because we've only got so much time and there's a lot of information but we're going right. to talk about effectively who is the king of the afc east right now on paper based on roster subtractions and effectively additions now who do you want me to give you first i've got the bills i've got the jets i've got the dolphins uh and then obviously the patriots and i don't even we could probably punt on the patriots but where, right. where would you like to start well you can give me the bills first because i've already got my answer queued up <laughs> well i want to give you all of them and then we'll decide i think is how we should do this so like i'll give you the, the i'll give you the lists okay and then and, and with each list we'll talk about oh was this interesting or was that interesting and right. if there's not anything interesting we'll move on and okay. then at the end of it we'll talk about maybe well you like, wanted to show you, you you want short abbreviated shows so i was i was getting ready to make it about 18 minutes with my answer but go ahead please <laughs> continue I, I don't want short abbreviated shows <laughs> youtube and algorithms want short abbreviated abbreviated shows so uh, reported interest for the Buffalo Bills visits workouts with one Bills drive. I'm going to go through this fast. If you need me to like to repeat something, please stop me. Okay. I know that I talk fast. I know that I mumble. My family tells me all the time. Got you. Uh, defensive tackle Sebastian Joseph Day visited. Julian Blackman visited. Mike Edwards visited. Austin Johnson visited. Uh, as far as that goes, and those are per, obviously, you know, uh, NFL smart guys, Adam Schefter, people like that. Uh Buffalo Bills 2024 free agents, Bills unrestricted free agents that have signed elsewhere. We know that they've lost Gabe Davis, Leonard Floyd, Dane Jackson. And if you didn't know, you know that now. This is good right. information for the listeners who maybe haven't been paying attention. Wait, Dane Jackson's gone? Yes, Dane Jackson is no longer a Buffalo Bill. Excuse me. Uh, unrestricted free agents signed elsewhere. Trent Sherfield has signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, I could probably give you that. So Gabe Davis signed with the Jaguars. Leonard Floyd signed with the 49ers, so he goes back to the NFC West. Dane Jackson got a bag, got a huge contract uh, for the player that he is from the Carolina Panthers. Trent Sherfield signed with the Vikings. Unrestricted free agents that have signed elsewhere. Tyrell Dodson, who you guys talked about on Thursday, signed with the Seattle Seahawks. He also got a pretty decent bag for the player that he was prior to the 2023 season. Puna Ford signed with the Chargers. Tim Settle signed with the Houston Texans. Jordan Phillips signed with the New York Giants, and that recently happened. That happened like yes. last week. The Buffalo Bills, uh, they have released these players, and they've signed elsewhere. Jordan Jordan Poyer, as we know, signed with the Miami Dolphins. Mitch Morse, as we know, signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Saran Neal signed also with the Miami Dolphins, who is a key special teams player and a backup to Taron Johnson. Naheem Hines was released. He signed with the Cleveland Browns. There's questions as to whether or not he'll even be ready for the season this year. Uh, along with the next player, Tredavious White. If you are not, if you've been living under a rock, Tredavious White is no longer a Buffalo Bill. He was released and he recently signed with the Los Angeles Rams, which was somewhat of a surprise to some people. Some people thought that he might possibly retire, but he didn't. He's going to keep playing, which is good. Damian Harris retired from the NFL, and then uh, free agents that the Bills have lost that are still available: Micah Hyde, Linville Joseph, Shaq Lawson. Taylor Medikevich or Tyler Medikevich, other and Deontay Hardy, I think just got signed. I think he there was it's not on this list, but he was just signed. Latavius Murray, who's a thousand years old, and then quarterback Kyle Allen, who I think just got married, possibly. I'm not sure. And, and then reserve, elsewhere also. Did he sign somewhere else? Uh, yeah. and then reserve future signings. Uh, and I'm getting this for from the dreaded Buffalo Rumblings website, so which is like a bad word <laughs> on the show now. Um 
Reserve future signings. The Bills have signed as for reserve futures. Annie Isabella, Terrell Shavers, KJ Hamler. These are guys we're not largely going to know. Uh, Brian Thompson, Trey McKitty, Richard Goriage, uh, Kevin Jarvis, Cameron Klein, Jamarcus Ingram, Kyron Brown, Kendall Wilson. The interesting thing about there is uh, that's who they have lost, but I don't have who the Bills have signed, which includes... Dee, 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 dee. Well, the Wyatt. Bills have signed Mac Hollins. They've signed Curtis Samuel. Here it is. Yep, I've got the list. Yeah, okay, so Mitch, the list. Mitch, okay. Mitch Trubisky, right. Matt Hawk, uh, Nicholas Morrow, Mac Hollins, who's a wide receiver, Curtis Samuel, who's a wide receiver, Casey, uh, Casey Tuhill, defensive end, Mike Edwards, safety, Mike Clapp, offensive line, and then Austin Johnson, defensive line. Uh, and then the Bills have re-signed A.J. Epinesa, Daquan Jones, Taylor Rapp, Quentin Morris, Cam Lewis, and then Ty Johnson. So that's the Buffalo Bills. So any overarching thoughts about the Bills roster? That was a that was a long list. And these are all going to be somewhat long, and I don't really know how to break them up to make them palatable. No, actually, we talked a little bit about this the other day. I think what the Bills have done is done a really good job of taking – veterans from other teams that are guys that have experience like for instance Nicholas Morrow comes over from the Eagles I think he started like 12 games last year um Austin Johnson was with the Chargers eight-year guy um you know Deshaun Williams uh, a five-year player started 10 games so they brought some guys in that are going to fill some roles as backups and role players uh, so they're not necessarily relying so much on the rookies of the draft. So I think right, they've done right. a good job of backfilling with guys they can rely on that have game experience in the NFL. And then they'll go ahead and hit their, you know, not so much pressure on the draft picks, which, by the way, is the M.O. of the Bills, because McDermott does not like to throw rookies in right away, which John and I and I think you do as well. Both this all, all three of us disagree on. Yeah, but it yeah. looks like they have done a good job of backfilling. So I'm going to give you abbreviated answers for the other three teams. So okay. it's not going to be quite as extensive because I don't think right. we necessarily care about restricted free agents that have left the Jets, right, for all intents and right. purposes. Who the Jets have signed that's important. Cornerback Isaiah Oliver, uh, offensive guard John Simpson, defensive tackle uh, Javon Kinlaw, uh, quarterback Tyra Taylor, de defensive tackle Leki Futu, uh, Leki Futu, offensive tackle Tyron Smith, and then wide receiver Mike Williams. Now, Mike Williams is a big name. Yes. He uh, alongside uh, Garrett Wilson. And I think uh, you could also throw re-signing or signing Aaron Rodgers in there because you've only played 17 seconds of a season. Yes. He's almost like another free agent as well. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is coming back. He should be healthy. Chuck Clark, safety, tight end Kenny Yeboah, uh, Greg Zerline, who's a kicker, Pat, uh, punter uh, Thomas Morstead, linebacker C.J. Mosley returns, offensive lineman Jake Hansen, defensive tackle Solomon Thomas, Jalen Holmes, and then safety Ashton Davis. The only notable cut for them is C.J. Uzama, who I actually think is very interesting because they brought him in kind of on a big deal off of Cincinnati when right. he had that big year with Cincinnati. I mean, he was all the talk on Good Morning Football for a long time. That what was it two year two seasons ago? Uh, the biggest thing here for me is kind of like that that offensive tackle, the Tyron Smith deal, who's an eight time Pro Bowler. Uh, he's going to protect uh, Aaron Rodgers' blind side, but the but he's also thirty three years old. He's got some miles in there right so it's kind of a, like they've got a guy they've got a one-year stop gap uh he's got a 20 million dollar max 6.5 million dollars guaranteed the question is 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 he going to be able to hold up my guess is, is yes he's probably going to well, be fine we'll the ahead. only reason the, the only reason the cowboys let him go is because he hasn't held up if you look at tyron smith over the last like three seasons four seasons he's had major injury issues this this latter part of his career so Tyron Smith coming in and them expecting him to play 17 games to me is far fetched. He hasn't played 17 games, I don't think ever. I yeah, mean, he's he, been he's been on the injury list. He's been beat up. But when it's he plays, he's hard. good. But when he plays, oh yeah, when he plays, he's very good. But when is he going to play? Tracy Victor asks, "Where is John Fina?" And uh, just so everybody kind of knows, as we're still kind of getting into the rhythm of this thing through the off season, this is very much going to be kind of a round robin between the three of us. So whoever can make it to an episode is going to make it. Uh, so tonight it's you, unfortunately, Tracy have me and Jerry <laughs> and right. no John Fita. Thursday it was Jerry and John uh, last week, Tuesday, it was just me. And then last week on Sunday, it was the three of us and we'll see, we have a, I'll go through the schedule for on the beat when we get there. But uh, yeah, just so everybody kind of knows, it's kind of a round robin. Now, the Dolphins. The Dolphins are going to be interesting because there's a lot. They have made a lot of moves. Like, it's crazy. Um, and a lot of these guys have never heard of before. Richard Carecraft, 
McCarecraft, uh, Jack Driscoll. So he's a wide receiver, Jack Driscoll, offensive line, Isaiah Wynn, guard. Braxton Berrios, that's a big name, wide receiver. Jonathan Harris, defensive lineman. Benito Jones, defensive tackle. Jody Forson, tight end. Kendall Fuller, cornerback. Like, I, I probably should just try to find the guys that are good. Jordan Jordan Poyer, safety. Shaq Barrett. To me, that's a guy that I would want on this Buffalo Bills football yeah. team. One year, $9 million. I probably would rather have him than some other players that sign for big numbers. Uh, Aaron Brewer, who's the center. Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker, Robert Jones is a guard. Nick Needham, defensive back. Uh, Janu Smith, tight end. Janu Smith is an interesting signing because Janu Smith was a Bills, I'll say, destroyer when he was with the Titans. And then he went to New England and vanished. Like I was, before the Bills were talking 12 personnel, I was very much like, you're going to give me Bill Belichick twice a year and they're going to run at me, Hunter Henry and Janu Smith, and I got to defend that? Are you insane? And then it never materialized into right. anything, probably because of their quarterback situation. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much who their signings are. They are looking at Odell Beckham, which I would hate to see that happen. And then they've got a lot of injuries on the defensive line, specifically at defensive end. They have no real pass rushers. Uh, Jalen Phillips is going to be recovering. He's not going to be ready for the beginning of the season. And then Bradley Chubb is oft injured. Is that the best way to say that? Oft? Yes. Oft injured. Um, any thoughts on the Dolphins real quick? Uh, Dolphins, have they've, they've done a good job on a few spots. But again, it almost seems like they've taken some chances with some players of age. They've taken some chances on some players of, of with injury and maybe have – had flashes of greatness that have become mediocre and are trying to catch that magic again. Almost like they've tried to sign guys for one last haymaker. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like uh, they're going to go ahead and try to build this team to win this year and, and then see where they can go. And then after that, you know, dump a bunch of guys and maybe try to rebuild a little bit. But it's almost like they brought in guys to try to try to win this thing this season. Right, exactly. Last team in the AFC East, the Patriots, which I borderline don't want to talk about, but we'll talk about at least, I'll give you their key signings real quick. First of all, the Patriots don't have a quarterback. I mean, they've got a right. couple guys, but <laughs> I know that you guys don't like it. You former John and you don't like it when uh, fans like myself use disparaging terms for guys that probably aren't fit to play start NFL games, right? There's words okay. that you guys don't yes. like. So I, yeah. I'll refrain from using those words, but they do not have a let's say a rosterable starting QB one. Is that a fair way of saying it? <laughs> you can say they don't have a quarterback. It's, it's you don't have to. <laughs> well, they have, do. They technically you know. have quarterbacks on the roster, but Fina's I mean. not, Fina's not here tonight. So we don't, not, we don't need to throw in the crossword puzzle words. Okay. I mean, Fina, they don't have a viable starting quarterback. For being a pass aggressive, sarcastic, sarcastic ass. Fina is very nice. Is that true? Like he's just a nice, nice guy, right? Yes, he is. He's, he's only a sarcastic ass to people he likes. Passive aggressive, but he's always passive yeah. aggressive when he does it. Yeah. He's not like in your face sarcastic ass yes, like me exactly it's, it's more yes. passive. sorry side sorry my bad sarcasm you, and passive aggressiveness is a sign of intelligence you very mu very time. much so yes there yeah you know. your your brain works quickly quicker <laughs> than other people's at that point in time especially when people don't get it when people don't get the joke right. you're like oh i'm like three steps ahead of everybody exactly <laughs> uh so the patriots cornerback alec austin wide receiver kendrick bourne Tight end Farrell Brown, uh, offensive tackle Trent Brown. That's a big signing, in my opinion. Uh, special teams ace Cody Davis. Kyle Duggar uh, has signed with the Patriots. Safety Kyle Duggar. Uh, it looks like running back Ezekiel Elliott has returned. Oh, okay. oh, this is their list of free agents. No, this is is this who they've signed? Uh, uh, this might just be their list of, list of free agents. I know they signed Kendrick, Kendrick Bourne. This website sucks. So, sorry. I apologize. Uh oh no it it does say resigned okay my bad so I apologize I just need to read the footer notes so Ezekiel Elliott has not resigned yet just so okay. everybody knows uh okay. Mike Kosecki was signed by the Bengals so he is gone Hunter Hunter Henry has resigned that's funny too is that like Mike Kosecki ended up there with John o. Smith and Hunter Henry and it's like they right. three headed freaking monster at wide receiver and they didn't use any of them effic efficiently. Uh, Jalen Mills was signed by the Giants, so he's gone. Jalen Rager has resigned, wide receiver Jalen Rager. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Josh Uche, who I think the world of Josh Uche, 
Um, he did not have a good season last year. I think he was injured for some of it. Um, but Josh Uche also resigned with the with the New England or the yeah the New England Patriots, and then uh, linebacker Mac Wilson Sr. was signed by the Cardinals. Offensive tackle Tyrone Wheatley Jr. resigned with the, with the Patriots. Who else we got here? Uh, Austin Hooper, tight end Austin Hooper has resigned or has been signed, I should say. KJ Osborne has been signed, and that's pretty much it. They've lost. I think the biggest loss they've got Devonte Parker, who's gone. Mike Gusecki is gone, as I mentioned, and then uh, Mac Jones, which I don't think they're going to miss Mac Jones a whole lot. No. So what 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 are your thoughts quickly on the Patriots? Because I know you've got thoughts specifically around their head coach. I I, I don't know. Obviously, they went from a. Uh, I guess the word you would say would be dictator a no-nonsense, a cold head coach, a very um, critical head coach, a, a head coach that was very much um, relying upon the player doing his job. Okay, how many times do you hear that out of, out of New England, out of Foxborough? Do your job. Belichick's mm-hmm. big, big saying. And they've almost gone to the, I, I don't know, I use this term a little bit loosely, but almost the Dion model. Mm-hmm. Okay, they hire a former player. A guy that has no coaching head coaching experience that I know of. Right, right. Um, a former player, kind of a rah-rah guy, a locker room guy when he was there, much like they've done in Las Vegas in signing Antonio Grant. Right, right. So it's almost like they're trying to catch that lightning in a bottle to to spark the team with a guy that the players can relate to. Because I think that if you look at the New England Patriots over the last three years, I guess you could say after Tom Brady, um, Belichick is not very relatable, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to get catch that that energy, that guy that's relatable to the players, the guy that say I did it, and and you know build with youth and try to build a and build a championship a championship team that way. That's the way I see New England going. Do you feel like that's something that can work in the NFL with professionals? It it, it feels like to me with college players, young kids, not young. I, I'm using the word kids. I'm 50. And right. I know you're older than me, but like young kids, it seems like you can do the rah, rah thing. Right. I've read, I've read, you know, Urban Meyer. I know Urban Meyer is not a, a popular name in sports right now, but Urban Meyer wrote a book called Above the Line. Um, and I've read some other things as it talked about just like trying to connect with Gen X players or Gen X people like you and me versus trying to connect with the players of today and like how that language has to change and the way the communication has to change. But there's a rah-rah ability when you talk about college, right? Right. Do you feel like that can work with dudes that are like rolling up in a Lamborghini, cash in, uh, in $200,000 paychecks? I think so. I think it can to some extent. Um, I weekly. think a lot of two hundred thousand dollar right. weekly. Page you have to look at today's <laughs> player, okay? Today's player thrives on positivity. Today's player thrives on getting patted on the back. Today's player doesn't really respond well to the constant grind and constantly being told that you know they've got to do better. They want somebody to lift them up. It's the social media generation, right? They create an image of themselves and then they go to social media and just, you know, you've seen it amongst, you know, our own fan base. Somebody will put something out there and then everybody lifts them up. And that's what they're used to. Yeah, um, yep. I'm not saying that they don't thrive in structure. I'm not saying they don't thrive in discipline. But what I am saying is the days of the grind 24-7 with this new generation, it doesn't always work. Now, that being said, when you have a team that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, when you have a team that is not, you know, playing at the level they should and you're losing games, can you flip the switch and get those guys to do what you want them to do and get on them without them saying, man, what are you talking about? We're boys, you know, we're all, we're, you know, you've been, Mm. you know, you've been loving us up and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you know, you're bringing me down. Right. And that's the fine line with all this. <laughs> that's the fine line. I uh, the, the one of the best quotes I I read about a coach and just and it was in a leadership book. I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but it, it just talked about reaching people 
in a different generation and an older generation. And to your point, like, you know, you're not good enough. You know, you need to be better. Like you can play better. I know you can play better. Like be the best, do your job. Like all that right. stuff that Bill Belichick says. And, and, and it's a stark contrast even between Belichick and Marv Levy. And that might be an interesting conversation here. But you know, we've, we've like, talked about it on here before, Joe. I mean, you know, there's, I don't even know if you can say it's the college model because we've seen the college model completely blow up. Yeah, but the college the model, NFL. the college model is the next part. So it was a head coach that said, "That's how I used to coach." I don't remember who the head coach was or is off the top of my head, but he said, "I used to be that guy that was like, you got to be better. Like you've got to be great. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna strive for perfection and settle for excellence, which is a, a right. phrase that I've used in my life." And he said, "I had to change my vernacular to literally." bringing said play because they wouldn't receive it and they could they couldn't grasp that i was trying to tell them well, you're great i need you to be great hang on let me finish i yeah. need you to be great because i see greatness in you like i see greatness in you i know you can be better so it turned into i had to bring the player in show him video and say literally things such as jerry do you see the way that you played and you would answer answer yes yeah do you feel like you gave your best effort or could you have been better right Right. And then, the, and then, the, and then, the, and then, the, and then the hook was, do you think the way that you're playing is ever going to win us a championship? And then they would respond, no, I don't think it will. And he's like, can we get better? Yes. It's just like the conversation and the right. dialogue completely changed from the way that you and I, <laughs> the direct. When I talk about, when I talk about that college model, I think of Chip Kelly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chip Kelly having um, nutritionists make, specific smoothies for each player chip kelly giving sleep monitors to his players mm -hmm. and telling them they sh they have to check them in and you have to have this much sleep chip kelly you know every waking moment of the day was accounted for and that is the college model i mean in college though their days are basically laid out for them. there's right. really no thinking you you go to class you go do football right. it's pretty simple right and that's kind of what i was saying and that, you you can't do that with 30 some year old men. I mean, you can't tell Jason right. Peters that you're, you need to sleep nine hours a night or 10 hours a night. Th this man's been in the league for 15 years at that point, And he's won multiple pro bowls doing it the way he was doing it. You're not going to tell him how to do it differently. So yeah. that's, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking at. No, I, I, I agree. And we're a little off script right now, which is great. Right. But it literally goes back to uh, Madden. So like the release of Madden always coincides around week six, week seven, week eight of the NFL season. And there were very, there were several years where I felt like the bills would come out of the box, hot, super hot. And it was like crushing everybody four and oh, three, and know, oh, five and one. And then Madden would get released and the bills like would start sucking, like sucking ASS horribly. And the funny thing is, is my, my, my opinion, my feeling, my fear got verified or validated when they were talking about Kyler Murray. And then you could see it in Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray would be great in the beginning of the season. The demise then, of an NFL franchise because of Madden is a little far fetched, but I'll, I'll not, let you I'll let you run. I'll let you run with you that. You of all people, you of all people know the amount of time it takes I'll to let you study your to study your opponent versus being right. distracted as a as a young right. 20 year old man right i'll let you run with that <laughs> all right let's get let's get on let's get back on task he because not buying it this is getting ready to go straight into they want, a they wanted straight to into it, a decline they wanted to write it in the kind of contract that he couldn't down. play video games during the season dude straight down let's let's stay on task <laughs> you were okay, not we on any of the about, teams that i'm talking about you were not on any about of the new teams. england we talked about New England. Who are we talking Jerry, about next? Jerry's like, I'm out. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so that, that's all four of them. So we've talked about all four right. rosters. So getting back, we've got a couple minutes left, probably five, ten minutes left. And what we're just trying to surmise is where do where do e where does each team stand kind of in the division right now with the roster additions, the roster subtractions, right? right where they're at, the holes that they have. So we're just looking for Who's on top of the AFC East right now with the understanding right. that we got the draft coming up, we got the, the right. finish of free agency coming up, and then obviously we have to play the season. I put it to you this way. I always I always quote, I quoted him today earlier. I quoted him earlier today, the great philosopher Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um I learned a lot from watching um promos of Ric Flair throughout my life as a young as a young man. Okay. And um, you know. There's, so there's many, somehow, there's, somehow that's valid, but there's many, many, but I will, I will go, <laughs> I will go back to 
what Ric Flair used to always say: "To be the man, you got to beat the man." Right? It's true, and it's that it's that simple. And and you know what? If you're the Jets and you're the New England Patriots and you're the Miami Dolphins, I'll give you another Ric Flair quote, and it is as such. You know, you don't have to like it, but you better learn to love it, baby, because it's the best thing going today. And and that's the way I feel about it. The Bills are the team to beat in the AFC East. They will be the team to beat until somebody does it. Right. I think that Miami is, is, is has done a good job with some of the signings. Like I said, I think they filled some holes. The holes they filled were to try to combat against the Buffalo Bills. Well, the biggest loss we didn't even I didn't even mention, which was Christian Wilkins. Like they lost right. like right. Christian Wilkins was a Buffalo Bills menace. Josh right. Allen. What, what, when the when the game clock isn't running, Josh Allen is gracious to everybody. But during the football game, Josh Allen does not like Christian Wilkins. No. So Wilkins moves on, but they do get Shaq Barrett. You know, they've tried to do some things. And, of sure. course, the Poyer signing is, yes. is as much of an annoyance as anything. Yes. But, you know, the team that I still look at in the AFC East, and I looked at them last year, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a uh, – I can't tell the future. Um, I didn't pull the magic eight ball out and say that he was going to get hurt in 17 seconds, but I still look at the New York Jets as the team that is the biggest threat to the Buffalo Bills. And the reason I do is because of that defense and because of Aaron Rodgers yeah. and the weapons they have. Now, they've got to bolster the offensive line through the draft. They got to get better up front because, as we saw last year, he's nothing but a play away from not being out there again. Right. So, the one thing that I will say about the Jets that has been interesting, and it's been reported this offseason, at the ownership meetings, and the head coaches are down there as well, Salah and Woody Johnson did have beef at the ownership meetings. It was reported they had really? a pretty heated discussion Didn't down know there. That. Didn't um, know that. I'm sure that Woody's growing impatient because of the money he's spending and the results that he's getting. Um, and and Salah, obviously, is the head coach, is the uh, – is is, you know, he's a uh, public enemy number one. As far as that goes, he's the target of all, you know, mm -hmm. frustration. So right, right. you need to look at that as well, especially if they have some issues and they start losing ball games early. Is there a move made pretty quick at the head coaching spot at the New York Jets? I can't see it. I can't see Robert Sala going anywhere. Like I just like, like I, I, I can argue reasons why he should go. Um, well, no, I can't either. I like Sala. I think Sala is a great coach. But again, Woody Johnson is in the middle of it. And when you're spending that kind of money and you're not getting the results, I don't care how much a yeah. coach is likable. Somebody's got to take the fall. So getting getting to my points, and this is the crux, right? This is the, this is the whole point of this episode, right? So we're we're at the meat of the episode, and your takes were on point and great. And I think, not think, I know that I agree with you. For me in order to be the man you got to beat the man right yes 100 percent. even though it's scripted uh in professional wrestling but that's a different conversation because the nfl is not scripted the you nfl's know, not it's fake the, the nfl's not scripted right there's Jerry? a lot of people that think the nfl scripted i was just gonna i was asking you you played the nfl's not scripted right jerry mm -hmm. don't it shrug your shoulders <laughs> when you're a member of that fraternity joe you don't tell <laughs> i don't i don't know all right the show might be over anyway um <laughs> <laughs> um for me, it's about Josh Allen. As long as the Buffalo Bills have Josh Allen as their quarterback, whoever's got the best, it, it comes down to the Tom Brady conversation. There were probably a couple of years where the Patriots didn't have the best roster in the AFC East, but they had Tom Brady. And I think we're finding, discovering, and we have discovered through even the release of Bill Belichick that he was Brady was probably a bigger part of that conversation of why they were winning than even right. Belichick was. So for me, it's about Josh Allen. Now, Josh Allen is going to have to morph. He's going to have to take another step. Uh, we talked about OTAs. One of the conversations I asked a couple of the Bills players today was basically, what's it going to be like going into OTAs missing five of your captains? Five. Like, that's a big number. It's one thing to roll a captain or two, five of them, and a couple of them, serious leaders in that locker room and literally the conversation was yeah we're gonna see like that that's a good question and we're gonna find out who kind of steps up in a void of leadership i so don't I know it, you know i don't know what the weather's going to be like in buffalo tomorrow but it's if gonna it's clock it's, gonna be, it's gonna be gorgeous okay well it's gonna be really gorgeous over one bill's drive mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is there is going to be a levity about that building tomorrow i know right, nobody right. wants to believe it but the fact that that the elephant in the room has been handled, right, right, and 
production skill set, greatest ever, whatever. Set all that aside. Yeah. When you take that kind of tension out of a building that already has tension, uh, enough tension of its own, right? And you take that tension out of the building, there's going to be a levity about it. And yeah. I think that that's something that's going to be interesting as we move through the offseason into the season and, you know, and training camp and all of that. How does this Bills team look? Um, you know, with maybe the distractions removed from the scenario. Yeah, agreed. So getting back to uh, who I think is number one, for me, it's it's the Bills with Josh Allen. That is does not mean that I'm saying it's a cakewalk. I feel like the AFC East got stronger and scarier for the Buffalo Bills to include not only what they did, the Jets and the Dolphins specifically, but the losses that the Bills are, have taken and have to like fill. It'll be interesting to see how the season plays out. But on paper right now, I've got the Bills number one. So with that, we're going to get out of here in about a half a second. Rank for me those four teams in order if the season started today, how they would end 17 games on the road. So number one, number two, number three, number four. Buffalo Bills number one, New York Jets two, Miami Dolphins three, and the New England Patriots four. I think we're in agreement on one and four. A hundred percent. The Bills, I have number one as well. I feel like the Jets are just snake bit. Like there's just the Jets are. They're just the Jets, right? I mean, there's just a something's got to give at some point, man. You think you something's got to give at some point. But you and I don't know. Maybe it's my maybe it's my unabashed belief in Aaron Rodgers, the most polarizing individual in the NFL. Um, it's, a, it's a great place to put your belief from a quarterback standpoint. Like right. Aaron I think is, that he is that good still. If they can block for him, they're going to be really, they're going to be a problem. Right. Right. Because defensively, they already are a problem. So give me that, the, give me that Dolphins offensive line or offense, offensive line, sorry, offense. Um, and then uh, effectively the retooling of the, of the defense that they're going to, I was going to say retooling of the defensive line, retooling of that defense and then the Jets. But I think it's going to be close. I think those those two teams could end up either tied record-wise or within a game of each other. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the Bills squeak out with like a three- or four-game lead. I think the Bills, no. if, they, if they win the East, they're a game up, right? It's going to be another bloodbath like it was last year. Yeah, I mean, and it's going to come and, down to the last couple of weeks. And the Patriots are going to be thinking about the draft of around week five. Right. <laughs> they're going to be – you talk about a levity in a building. My right. goodness. Right. So. Um, for yeah. sure. So we're a little bit over time, but uh, this was a fun conversation. It's it's super hard to get into this rhythm of short shows. Yes, it's, it is. It's just so we're struggling, but we're going to get there before the season starts. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But uh, Jerry, before I get us out of here, any final comments, thoughts on OTAs or on just the uh, the roster conversation we had today? Um, I really thought I really wish I gave myself a chance to come up with some catchy saying for what OTA stands for, other than <laughs> We're like deep obvious time assault or something of that nature. Um, you know, all that's done is to give the, the boys an opportunity to get together and have a couple pops and go eat some good wings at the bar bill or something while they're, while um, they're benching and squatting. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's in. It's in. It gets him back in town. It gets. It. It keeps him in football mind. I guess is what it. It does at the end. Of the exactly. Day. But, excellent. Well, I'm glad that you were able to join me. Um, I was a little nervous. I'll be. I apologize, man. I apologize. Show. You gotta understand, dude. I got this mind thing going on, man. You know. So sometimes <laughs> it happens. I mean, <laughs> I think know. we're all. I think we're all there. But uh, you know, my. You know, like my friends call me Poe from Kung Fu Panda. I mean, it's kind of how I roll. That's funny. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have been tuned into the Overreaction Buffalo Sports Show on the Overreaction. It's so weird to say that the Overreaction Sports Network. Like I'm still used to saying Buffalo Rumblings. Uh, it has been so good to have you guys with us tonight uh, for this episode. Again, please like, please subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube right now, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're listening in podcast form, please subscribe to whatever podcast platform you're on. But uh, Tuesday, um, I have a list and I don't have it with me. Tuesday, we are going to have On the Beat. For the On the Beat show, we're going to have Ryan Talbot. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to talk about OTAs and just some stuff like that. Next week, for a draft special, you're going to... So we're going to go all week long next week, or in two weeks, I should say, for yes, sir. running into the draft. Mon- we're going to have a Sunday show, Monday show, Tuesday show, and a Wednesday show. Sunday will be overreaction to Buffalo Sports. Monday, you're going to have... RJ Young, um, national uh, college football correspondent from Fox Sports, will be with us. We're going to talk exclusively 
wide receivers. Yep. Tuesday, we're going to have Joe Marino on the show from the Locked On Bills podcast, which I know he's not a Bills beat reporter, but when you're talking about scouting and you're talking about draft players, he's probably next to Mel Kuyper, the best guy to have. And then Wednesday, we're working on some stuff as far as that goes as well. You think you can maybe get Zig, right? Zig Fricasi? Yeah, you? we'll get Zig Fricasi on at some point, and um, we'll reach out to him as well as others. I'm I'm excited about it, man. They, the the uh the, the the turnout's been great people are excited about coming on with us yeah and we'll continue to bring you the best bills content we can yep and we are booked and then jay skirsky will actually be joining us for on the beat for, uh, from the buffalo news the week after the draft to kind of talk about and break down just the press conferences as the bills have drafted and stuff like that but again ladies and gentlemen you've been tuned in the overreaction of buffalo sports show for myself for jerry strosky for john fina it's been so good to have you we love you guys appreciate you uh, tune in to On the Beat on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.